We are previewing week 13 in college football here at SBR Forum Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. We're talking right now with Steve, returning college football handicapping analyst from collegefootballwinning.com. Steve, thanks for being back with us this week. Thank you for having me back, Peter. All right, let's jump right in with the biggest game of the week. You chose it to talk about, and I gave it to you. You reserved it early, early on. It's Notre Dame at USC. Of course, if Notre Dame wins, they get to the BCS championship game. USC is a five-and-a-half-point uh, home underdog, and that, of course, has a lot to do with Matt Barkley being injured. i got to tell you, I think the market is overestimating, overvaluing the absence of, uh, of Barkley's injury. And, um, you know, I think that uh, it's going to be a tight, close game. I don't necessarily think it's going to be, uh, you know, like if this were a 10.5-point spread, I would say it's a lock. But, you know, USC, when they're a big favorite, they're always a great bet against. They always underperform. They're always way overvalued on the spreads. Here they are as an underdog. I think their talent will show through. I think this might go down to, you know, be a two-point game or a field goal game. And I think you're getting a little bit of value, USC plus 5.5. What do you think? Wow, I think that, that's pretty well said, Peter. You know, uh, you mentioned it, but full disclosure here, I did reserve this game yes. before the games yes. played last Saturday. Absolutely. And that was just chaos. So that was when Mar Matt Barkley was still USC's quarterback, before SC lost to UCLA, and Notre Dame was sitting at number three in the BCS instead of number one. So, okay, that said, let's, let's talk about some pretty serious issues uh, surrounding this game. USC has lost four games this season. They were all away games except for that Oregon game, and that was a complete shootout. That is not something that Notre Dame is prepared to get into with anybody. Right. In terms of total offenses of those four teams that SC has lost to, Arizona ranked eighth in the country, Oregon sixth in the country, UCLA ranked 15th in the country. The only outlier is Stanford. So what happened with Stanford? USC this season has allowed 15 sacks, but they allowed four to Stanford. Why? SC was missing their all-world senior center, Khalid Holmes. Even their backup center was hurt for that night, and that, that enabled that defensive line for Stanford to just wreak havoc on SC. In each of the losses, each of the four losses, Matt Barkley threw two interceptions. Max Wittick, if you want to play this game, Max Wittick threw fewer interceptions, considerably fewer in high school than Matt Barkley did, and they went to the same high school, modern day. He's bigger than Barkley. Uh, he is, he's got a stronger arm. He, has the same, he had the same quarterback's prep coach, and that quarterback's coach says that Max Wittick is even better than Matt Barkley. Mm. Let's not forget that Max Wittick has been taking about 25% of the first team snaps all season long. So he is not new to this offense here this week. USC's defense in the media especially has been too much maligned. They're 49th in total defense. Okay, fine. But in terms of yards per play, they're 33rd in the country. They're third in the country in sacks. They've had 15 sacks the last three games. They're third in the country in tackles for loss. They're 25th in fumble recoveries. They are tied for second in the country, Peter, in interceptions with 18. A lot of people want to look at a parallel game, maybe, with Notre Dame going to Oklahoma, but I would tell people that is not a like parallel. Notre Dame's offensive strength is their running game. They're ranked 28th in the country. Oklahoma's running defense, the rushing defense, in terms of yards per rush, they're ranked 110th in the country, Peter. USC's rushing defense is ranked 37th. A far cry from 110th. And let's keep in mind, USC has played teams the likes of which uh, Oregon, you know, high power offenses, especially rushing attacks. Here's a, a little X factor kickoffs. Last week, USC lost by 10 to UCLA. Uh, UCLA's kicker, unbeknownst to pretty much anybody, has the greatest touchback percentage in all of college football 70, about 79%. And he was six of seven touchbacks last week. Notre Dame's touchback percentage is 37%. Why does that matter? It matters because USC's greatest playmaker is Marquise Lee. He's also one of the top 10 kickoff returners in college football. And Lee performs 51.77% better on kickoffs at home than he does away. So this all amounts to USC is going to get much better starting field position against Notre Dame than they did against UCLA, and they put their hands in a, play in a playmaker at home where great things can happen. By our metrics here at collegefootballwinning.com, we thought that Notre Dame should have been between a 
three and a six and a half point favorite with Matt Barkley. And you know this as well as anyone, Peter. Odds makers are quite sharp, especially in marquee games. So we have to ask ourselves this question. If the line opened at most places, six, six and a half, even seven, why has Notre Dame been getting the majority of the betting action since this line opened? And why are the sports books moving this line down, yep. attracting more Notre Dame action? Why is that happening? Because Notre Dame, because because USC is the sharp side. It's obvious to me. So we cannot, yes, and we cannot pretend that USC is playing for nothing, like some people are would like us to believe. Beating their hated rival, sure, of course, un- and ranked number one on Senior Day at the Coliseum would go a long way to redeem SC's season and. Mark Easley is still in the running for the Heisman. And let's not forget, in 2002, Carson Palmer, his Heisman trophy was won against Notre Dame in the Coliseum. All those things put together. So look for Mark Easley to have a huge day. All those things put together. And I think we're going to see this line bounce around because of the square action. Mm -hmm. We might even get close to that touchdown. So we have a slight lean on USC if you can get that back to a touchdown. All right. Well, I have a pretty solid lean on USC, even at plus five and a half. Thanks so much. Great preview, Steve, from collegefootballwinning.com.